RuneScape has an impressive map that is constantly expanding as new content comes into the game. While overwhelming, this can be divided further into regions, all of them with their unique advantages. My personal favorite is Mortania. Not all these regions are created equal. In this video, I wanted to see which region in Old School RuneScape is the best. And what better way to do so than by starting from scratch. I'm going to be spending one hour in each region, starting with nothing, and seeing which region I can make the most money in in that one hour. The rules for this challenge are as follows. Each area's boundaries are going to be set by the last Trailblazers League's boundaries. I will be playing on my maxed main just to make sure that I do have access to everything available, but I will be starting with nothing and I cannot use my player-owned house. The Grand Exchange will be available to sell loot and to buy more gear in order to do different money makers. All right, guys, geared up, ready to go. Got one hour on my google.com timer here. I don't know how to incorporate a timer into RuneLight. If there is a plugin, please let me know in the comments below. But yeah, let me get ready and we'll start that timer and dive right on in. So the very first thing that I'm going to do is just collect a few iron bars here at the spawn just to get some starting cash. I have a grand total of five iron bars selling for a whopping 1000 GP. And with that 1000 GP, I'm going to buy some box traps. I'm also going to buy a knife and one teak log. I'm also going to have to buy an axe so we can get back up there. So for the uninitiated, the axe was in order to make this canoe right here. We're going to take the Waka canoe right up to the Black Chin Champas. And now I'm just going to three tick Black Chins. That's what the knife and the teak logs are for. It makes placing the traps way faster than if you didn't use it. We got 46-ish minutes left on the clock here. I got about 103. Uh, 104 if we count this trap right here, Chinchampas. I'm going to sell these up and then we're going to be going on to our next activity. As sick of a moneymaker that Chins was, I'm just going to sell these just because they are a little bit boring and I want to switch it up a little bit. Roughly 14 minutes in, we are at 400k. And if you guys can't tell by this glorious setup, we are heading up to Revenants. I have 94k left over, not really sure what I could do to improve my setup with that. Uh, so I'm just going to keep that in the bank and we're going to head on up there. Ah, a looting bag note. We definitely need one of those. All right, guys, wish me luck. I do have no freezes, so escaping might be a little bit difficult, uh, but we'll see how things go. Okay, since there's no people up here, I think orcs is going to be the best for me, especially since I'm using a magic short bow. Some PKers came, so I teleported out, but we got 240k in the bag. Dude, these bracelets are so good and you just get so many of them. I'm actually really digging this. I think I'm going to do this until there's 10 minutes left. I just really do want to get a Revenant weapon. It'd be so cool for the video. It's super unlikely. Don't get me wrong, but man, would it be nice to see. I get tell blocked and then I log out and this is what I get. Well, that's the goodest time as ever to sell off the remainder of the loot. I'm going to re-gear for a different setup and then we're going to spend the next 15 minutes, which will give us the rest of our time at our final location. This time we do have 650k in the bag. I could have stayed longer if I did have the noted drops, but that inventory was filling up very quickly. Look at this absolute chad with my cuddle. Um, I am going to get some Barrow's Gloves, so I will be dropping that 100k to compensate for that. And I didn't really know how to like justify giving myself like an Inferno Cape or a Defender, so I'm just not going to. We bought the Abbey Shield. Uh, dragon boots and we're just going to be rocking the backpack. So with the setup, if you can't tell with the crush weapon, I am going to Vedion. This is going to really depend on the drops that we get and me not seeing any PKers. But bro, then you can just get drops like that. And five rune pickaxes. Um, the problem with this method is that with this setup, Vedion is extremely slow to kill. A Salve Amulet would have been a really good idea for me to get. Um, just with the rules of the challenge, I didn't really know how to work that in there too well. Um, anyways, I don't think this is going to be our best moneymaker unless we get super lucky on like the next two drops since these are taking like five minutes each. Our friends are back. All right, we're back here one last time. I think I have time for one or two more kills, depending on if those goons show back up. And they got me right at the end. Oh, brutal. Final tally from the wilderness in one hour is almost 1.3 mil. I guess we got a couple untradeables that I can't really do too much with for this. So it's really around 1.4, 1.5 mil. Uh, we probably could have been close to two if I didn't die there and lose all of the stuff that was in my looting bag. But that's just the way that it goes when you're trying to make money in the wilderness. Next up, we're going to the elf land. Don't 
make me try to pronounce anything over here. Anyways, I promise I'm not going to do the whole thing at the Corrupted Gauntlet because there's some other stuff in that area that I do want to test out since it has been recently updated. That being said, we're definitely starting at the Corrupted Gauntlet because it's just so much money and you have to have literally nothing to go in there. Six thirty two, not too bad at all. And the loot's not the greatest though. Eight forty three, not as good. Ooh, that was a close one. I am still not very good at using the halberd. I was hoping to get a little spoon on a seed, like an armor or something like that, just for the next activity. I'm gonna do one more. Corrupted Gauntlet, which should put us at like roughly half of the time. Man, my times just went downhill. That's for sure. Let's see if we're lucky on this last one. Not so much. It's not too bad. It's a lot of rune items, which is always good. So I've never actually made these before, but um, I need to do something with the dust. So we're going to make divine super combats, and that should make us a little bit of extra money here. Two experience per pot, not the best training method. Dude, no way. I didn't think we were going to make it, but we are able to get a dragon pick, and uh, we're going to Zolcano. Cool. Calculated the times out. I have 21 minutes and 30 seconds to do Zolcano. Uh, I was trying to split it 50-50, but I do think that that extra Corrupted Gauntlet did push me over the edge in being able to do this with a dragon pickaxe instead of a rune pickaxe, so I am glad that I did that, even if I would like to spend a little more time on Zolcano. Honestly, this doesn't feel all too different from how it used to be. Um, I think the main difference is that you can toggle on experience or loot uh, due to this being a loot video. I have loot toggled on as that would make sense. So I'm guessing there's better experience if you have the other toggle. Well, looking at the loot, I should have stayed at the gauntlet. And the final tally for Prif after grinding up the rest of those shards, making the potion, selling off everything is 1.6 three mil currently in the lead i knew it was going to be if i just stuck with corrupted gauntlet the entire time it would have been a lot more but uh i, I don't want to turn this video into any more woulda coulda shoulda than it already is pretty happy with this in just one hour starting from scratch and with that the elf place takes the lead hey thank you guys so much for watching this if you are enjoying the video make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more similar content these are the two biggest things you can do to help me out as a creator well, I did really want to do a theater of blood for the Mauritania. I just don't think one half hour is enough to like prepare to get enough stuff to go in there. So we're going to have to come up with uh, some other plans. Cool. Starting the timer now in first order business, we need to get our Mauritania legs. We are going to Berg to Rot and we'll take this boat on over. Oh my God, he stopped me. I was really hoping this wouldn't happen. It's just a time waste. It's an old man rails house. And down in the basement, we can get ourselves a blessed sickle which is always good. And then um, we can also get ourselves a Draken's Medallion from this guy. And the reason I wanted this is one, it just gives us better access to the whole area. Uh, but most importantly, it gives us access to Mortania right here. So we can start our first moneymaker, which is going to be using the Blessed Sickle to cast Bloom and pick Fungus right on this log right here. Then if you are somehow unaware and have never done this activity before in your runescape career congratulations on not having to do this so what we're gonna have to do here is come over to the theater of blood we're gonna make a party and then we're gonna join the theater of blood then we're gonna leave the theater of blood doing this is going to restore our prayer run energy and everything else okie doke 12 and a half minutes in right now we got 247 fungi we're just gonna pop those in and insta sell them and we have 127k to work with i did want to go to barrows but this is not really enough to get even like the worst barrow set of all time so we're going to be going to the hallowed sepulcher we're here i'm only going to be looting floors four and five i think i don't think the other ones are going to be really worth it and i do want to be looting that grandmaster coffin at the end so maybe we can get a crazy outlier in the video All right, never lucky, but that's the last one of these. I got like roughly 17 minutes left on the clock and I do want to go to Barrows. Trident is doing surprisingly well. And for our last little bit of something for this section, nothing.
Well, despite Mauritania being my favorite region, we only made 245k here in this first hour. I had fun doing it, but uh, this one's definitely not winning the challenge. Mori in last place, I totally forgot to sell up all my range gear, but it's really only 300k, so it's gonna get knocked off here with the next region anyways. I am really dreading this one. There's not a lot of content here that is good for this challenge in particular, but we're going to make the most of it. Start off, I uh, am going to pickpocket this garden, get some starting cash. Five minutes are up, we got 7k, which is a little bit more than I actually thought I was going to have, which is great for our next moneymaker, because I'm headed to the sawmill and we're going to be buying out all the nails to sell them on the Grand Exchange. That took roughly two minutes. Now we have to go sell them and see what type of money we're working with. Let's just sell these off really quick. And we've turned that into 25K. Let's do it one more time. And look at all those nails. We are about 10 minutes in. I think this is the last one of these nail buying sessions I can do. I bought out all of the total of the world, so there's not really too many nails in stock right now. Once again, one of those things where I expected to have more money, so I can't do the thing that I was planning on originally doing, so we're going to plan B. I'm going to be catching implings, and for this one, obviously, the rare, like, dragon, lucky implings and stuff like that are going to be great to get, but our main focus is just going to be on eclectics. People buy those to farm out medium clues, and they're super easy to get a full inventory of. First inventory down, took about six minutes and we got one magpie in there. Halfway through, sitting at 438K, let me gear up and I'll show you what we're doing next. You can get a pretty solid gear setup for just 400K. Here's the inventory. I'm gonna head to Lumbridge and get us some rune gloves as well. And with this setup, we're gonna be killing these taloned wyverns, which are just shredding me in this terrible gear. And that is our first inventory done. 22 minutes left on the clock. Let me sell this up and see what upgrades we can get. I was hoping for a Barrow's plate body, but I'm like 60k off of any of them. Dragon Boots is really the only thing that we can afford right now while still being able to buy some more supplies and go right back. Here they are. Look at these big boys. So these are what we're up against. I just got to get this other like little one to stop aggroing us. And the fight is on. These are taking about three minutes each to kill. It's definitely not worth it. I'm going to finish it off just because there's like six minutes left on the clock. Uh, but if I had to do this over, this would not be the move. Oh man, I already redemptioned. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to finish this one. Like most of these, some mistakes were made, but we did end up doubling the last section at 674k for this region. And Mori gets bumped out with Mistelin taking third. Ah, desert. Another one where the cool stuff is going to be off limits to us. Uh, you can get the desert amulet from Jar, which is going to be how I'm going to start this one off. The timer is ticking. We're going to take this one to Narda. And the first place that we are going to go is going to be... Oh, god damn it! I have the uh, thing set to teleport. We got to wear the amulet. And then I'm going to be going to the agility pyramid. Okay, first one of these completed. I think it took about two and a half minutes, but I am like basically out of run energy. So they're going to go a little bit slower from here on out. Uh, I'm not really sure how many of these I want to do, but I do know what I want to do next. I just need a little bit more GP for a really basic setup. With eight of these out of the way, do I use them on him? There we go. 80k made. I literally ran out of money, so I'm going to head back to the desert. And we're going to do some blackjacking. Okay, I did like three minutes of blackjacking. Definitely not worth it. Agility Pyramid is a good deal faster than that. I'm just going to do a couple laps and then we'll head right back to the GE. Since I'm just running laps, I can explain what we're about to do next. I want to go to the Leviathan. I see it as the ultimate high risk, high reward play. Uh, I'm only going to have enough stuns. This is 10 stuns in order to kill the leviathan so i could just wipe this and not be able to do another attempt and have to come back to the pyramid uh and i can also just get a really shitty drop at the leviathan and just have to come back to the pyramid anyways here's the setup not even remotely worried 25 minutes left on the clock that should be able to get a few kills or maybe just one or maybe i just won't make it and we will crash and burn anyways wish me the best of luck well Shit, that's something, I guess. So I was gonna elk this, but I can't. Uh, we gotta figure something out here. I figured out I can just uncharge my glory. We'll sell the glory off and we'll get more runes for more shadow spells. Um, I think this is gonna be my last batch that I can do if I don't get something that is worth money. About a five minute kill each time. If I can get enough to get more runes to do more of these, we can do four more Leviathan kills. Oh, dude, that is a... Uh... 27 oh we can go again 
Goldor. Let's drop off the section and its resources. Well, 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 not the best performance yet. The, <laughs> the desert moves into last place with 71k. There's a good amount of content in Asgarnia and um, I'm gonna do none of it. I'm gonna sit here and we're gonna be picking up monk's robes. And here we are, one full inventory, two and a half minutes in. I'm gonna sell all these up real quick. Okay, almost 25K in two and a half minutes. I'm gonna repeat this and get ourselves another little basic range setup. 20 minutes of that enthralling content down the drain and we have 197K to work with. Here's our range setup, super duper basic. I went with the diamond bolts because they're about the same price as broad bolts right now, which is pretty crazy. And if you didn't realize, we are going to skeletal wyverns. These used to be like the moneymaker in runescape they're not as good anymore so people do other things but for the sake of this challenge i think this is going to be a really good way for us to build up a decent cash stack i remember people used to safes about these i have no clue how to do so uh these diamond bolts are shredding though it really does show that i don't do this activity you definitely need to bring more food than i brought because you're supposed to safe spot them but it seems like you can only safe spot them after they've lost aggro. So I did not bring enough food to last me that long. I've already redemptioned once and I'm going to have to teleport out. We have a little bit over 14 minutes left. And as per the kind of theme of the series, we are going big or we are going home. I spent every cent except for this 3.8k on a setup to go to God Wars dungeon. We're going to be doing some bandos. Hopefully KCing doesn't take too long with a rune crossbow. Okay, I got 25. I really hope this world is empty. No, it's not. I don't know how I'm going to hop. This is actually perfect. There's a guy who got bandos like halfway dead and then he himself died. So um, I think I am in the clear for this world. I'm going to be doing the six to zero method. If you've never done this and you are interested in doing a crossbow only bandos, it's actually really effective. Just search six to zero bandos method on YouTube. Not the luckiest series of events here. We ended up with 237k, not in the last place, but uh, definitely not ranking up in that top three that we do have earlier. Uh, I would have been the top three if I just said it monk robes the whole time, but I am going big. I want to see some big outlier drop during this video, and uh, unluckily, this region just wasn't it. I actually have a formulated a plan for this one, so we're going to grab that, and then we're going to run over to King Lathis's chest here because it's a guaranteed, uh, it's like 5k or so worth of stuff. That stuff right there. Only problem is it does boot us out, so we can't continue doing that over and over again. Before I spend time to go to the GE, I'm just going to dive right into our next thing here. I'm going to be buying box traps and we're going to be catching chinchampas. For what I want to do next, I need roughly 20 or 30k. Um, more is better, so we're just going to do like 5 to 10 minutes of chinchampas. Well, that's enough chins for this video, at least for now. For our next bit here, I do want to try to create wrath runes. On the wiki, it does seem like wrath runes are a really good money maker, but that does assume that we have all the pouches. And just since we're doing this challenge, I don't have any pouches. So I'm not sure if it's really gonna be worth doing without them, uh, but we'll see. I'm gonna keep my box trap, so we might head back to Jinchampas after all. How much is that worth? 6K? I don't know if this one's worth a guess. I saw some guy earlier here mining rune rocks, so I'm just wondering how crowded it is and if it's possible for us to get a few of them. I hopped through a bunch, but I did find a PvP world, so we're just gonna mine these on PvP world since it should be a quick 10k per rock. This is relatively empty, and I'm realizing why is because it's dog shit. I don't know why anybody would ever want to do this. I messed up all of my audio recordings. I caught 183 red chin chompas, which is 20 minutes worth. Here's the setup: got the dragon scimitar and the rune crossbow. So Still got 200k didn't really know what else to spend it on but we are going to demonics and i can just smell zenite i'm sure it's happening this is going to be the one and that's our last monkey down just show me the zenite and it is rune plates good that's actually pretty decent i shouldn't complain about that one 625k i'm actually super happy with that one that one turned out really well i know we didn't get the zenite but it was pretty low odds with like seven kills to get a one in 300 drop so you can't really expect things like that uh this just narrowly missed out on the top three spot this is going to be our top four i think at this point as a true Fremenic, we are going to start things off by getting our Fremenic Sea Boots 4 from Thord in there. Uh, the reason I'm getting these is that they teleport you right here into the center of town. 
which is going to be important for my first activity, which is going to be going to Waterbirth Island and picking up Snapegrass. Snapegrass sell for roughly 500 GP each, so this should be a good way for us to get 10k really fast. Cool, we are selling one load of Snapegrass, and that's going to give us 13k. With this money, I'm actually going to buy some Varrock Teleports. That way we can use the Grain Exchange just to do a few inventories of this, and that way we'll make a ton of money right off the bat. We're sitting about nine minutes into the challenge so far. Let me sell all this off and we're sitting with 57k. I'm going to be trying out the Blast Furnace. The Blast Furnace on paper seems like it's going to be a good idea. However, uh, it kind of depends on how many ores you can do and I don't have a coal bag which is going to greatly limit us. Well, it did take almost no time, probably like two minutes to make these um, for like what amounts to just a few K gains, I don't think it was worth it. Screw it, I'm going back to Snape Grace. 38 minutes left on the clock with 158K to our name. That's right, boys, we got our Black Dehyde and our Rune Crossbow, and we're about to kill Vorkath. It's the last kill of this section. Show me something good, and it does. Like, literally every drop here is so good. I know, like, so many people kill Vorkath for money, but there's a reason for it. Awesome. 833k, we have a new third place region with the Fremenix. Welcome to Sunny Karamja. We are going to start this off by getting some Karamja gloves. I've been doing this in most of the regions just because I think it's a really good way to get a teleport around. This is going to teleport us to the Gem Mine and Duradel, which are both in Shiloh Village, which is on the polar opposite side of the island. First thing I'm going to do is collect a few inventories of red spider's eggs. I am nine minutes in and I've gotten two inventories. These are surprisingly long to pick up. There's only one spawn in each world, so it's just a ton of time hopping in between servers. With selling off those red spider's eggs, we got enough to get ourselves a rune pickaxe, not enough to get a glory with it, which is what I really would have liked, but I also didn't want to spend a whole another five minutes picking up red spider's eggs. Then I think the fastest way for us to bank is going to be to teleport over here to Durdo go to the bank and then teleport back to the gem mine. The super average inventory here is looking at around 20K. Wow, I just realized I can bank right here. I have about 35 minutes left in Karamja. I sold up all of my, oh, maybe not all of them. I sold up most of my gems here. And honestly, this is not a very good money maker. It's not making me a lot. The gems are pretty much worthless. One of my friends mentioned that nature runes are really good money right now, and I'm going to test this out a little bit. I'm making an executive decision. Uh, these take about a minute and a half per run with run energy, which I'm about to be out of. Not doing this anymore. I'm changing the plan. Here we are back again. Welfare range setup. I'm just heading back to Karamja. Don't you worry about it. But I'm going to be killing the Tazar guys in hopes of getting an Abbey shield and Abbey maul or just some other obsidian piece. I'm just gonna be killing the Tazar Kets because these ones drop most of the items that I'm looking for and they're very easily safe spottable. I'm gonna try switching over to the big red boys. I'm not sure if this setup's gonna hit them very well. If not, I'll just switch back over to the gray ones. No fucking way, literally the first one we got the Abbey Helm. That's like literally insane. Um. Man, I'm not sure if I want to keep ranging these or if I should get a mage set up. And I am in the PvP world, and it's letting me select Ice Brush. We should be able to use the Blighted Sex here. Let me just test it out on this imp. Dude, we are gaming. That is great. Most of my money is tied up in the Mystic and the Ancient Staff, and then I put 150k in the bank, so even if we die, we're not really going to lose all of it, and we'll still be good for this challenge. These are really hard to stack. I think this is the best spot that I could find. Their wander distance is just really, really short, so I can't like really drag these guys over even to here, because they'll just start wandering off again. And that is time. Never ever lucky at all, except for that first drop, which is insanely spooned. Not a bad run at all, ending with 524k. We got extremely lucky on that helm. Otherwise, we would have this would have been terrible. 
Here we are, we're in Grand Current. Uh, there's so many great money makers here. And to start things off, I'm gonna be thieving from fruit stalls. I thought about collecting red spider's eggs, but we did that in the last one. And I wanna switch it up a little bit. Six, so that took less than one minute to fill an inventory and that inventory is worth 4K. We are so rich. Cool, I'm only doing one inventory of that, but I got ourselves an adamant pickaxe and a chisel. Next, we're gonna be making blood runes or Soul runes, whichever one is better profit. I'm gonna look that up now. We have 50K and it took about eight minutes. I don't think this is as good as red chin chompa. So I'm gonna go three tick red chins for a little bit. So I might've made a huge mistake. These are great chin chompas and these are 600 GP each. Honestly, the time to switch activities, I feel like I'm locked into doing these at least a little while longer. 35 minutes left on the clock, time to sell off everything and I'm getting myself a very basic melee setup. This right here this is what i am working with unfortunately in this setup i just don't have the dps it's crazy how much just like a defender does for you it's totally fun we're going to plan b which is brutal black dragons here's the first inventory of dragon loot 11 minutes left on the clock i'm not sure if we're really gonna have time to do anything else so i'm just gonna stick here these are pretty decent money and there's always a chance that we could get the visage and Kern comes in at 355k i had really high hopes for the vardorvis tech on this one uh but just what ended up happening here is I didn't have the DPS to out hit him. Um, for the first like three minutes of the fight, he was actually at full health because he was healing more damage than I was doing. And by the time I was out of food, he was only at half health. So maybe I could have done it if I did have a full inventory of Karambwans, but uh, even then it was close and at that point I would have wasted 20 minutes on not being able to get a completion so I don't think that that was worth it. Was Brutal Black Dragons the best choice? Maybe. I don't know. If I did this again I think I would do a few things a little differently. What's up guys? I am so excited to dive into this region. There are so many good money makers. If you want to dive right on in we're going to start by pickpocketing and then we're going to start doing some hunter. Almost 30 minutes on the dot. The only problem with this is that I am walking a lot and that is frustrating as a player that's used to running everywhere. But let's get up to the bank real quick and see the loot. So it looks like in those 30, 28 ish minutes, we we're able to get 71 of these. Luckily, these are worth quite a bit of money. And I think this is the best start that we've had to any region so far. I'm going to pause the timer just for a second here to explain. But I'm going to be spamming the first wave of the Coliseum for the next 28 minutes that are left on the clock here. Basically, all we have to do is kill the Fremnix and the Mage over and over again. And it's about 40 to 50k per run. On release, this was 100k per run. It was like something like 5 mil an hour. So we should probably cut that um, a little bit more in half because my gear sucks. And it will take a little bit of time to kill the Mage. But the other ones, I've made sure that my gear in every capacity, two hits each one of the Fremnix. So this way we can just get straight to the mage. I will be using the magic short bow and we'll just be blasting her. That took about a minute and a half with that Jaguar spawn in, definitely slowed things down. So I just got to speed things up. I've tried a ton of different setups. I wanted to share with you guys the way that I found was best to do this and get the claw scratch guy skip almost every single time. So we're going to be starting off with mage, pick blast me, and then just uh, queue up rigor, might as well. We're going to do two hits on each one of these. I do not have a range pot for this last kill, so it's going to be three on him. I like to try to position myself over towards the mage, DDS spec this guy once, and then we're going to DDS spec all of our remaining specs on the mage. Usually they hit a little bit better than that, but 
doing this and then dragon skimming the rest of this we should get the skip almost every single time and then once he dies try to run over towards the chest this is going to minimize your time walking later cash out confirm and the chest will be right here and then you're ready to start the next wave absolutely massive 1.4 mil in an hour from scratch Honestly, if I switched away from antelopes a little bit earlier, I think I could have pushed this one to the number one spot, especially sticking with the DDS strategy that I figured out nearly at the end of the Coliseum grind. Uh, while the Coliseum grind is super boring to just keep on resetting that first wave, if you are mid game and you're struggling to find other money makers and you're just a few mil away from an upgrade, this is a great way for you to do so. Um, even if you're not very skilled in PVM, as you can see, it took almost no actual skill whatsoever just hit the right monster with the right weapon and you'll get it every single time here are the final standings with prith dennis coming in at 1.6 varlamore with 1.4 and the wilderness with 1.3 mil thank you guys so much for watching if you did enjoy this video make sure to like this video let me know if you do like this style of video i haven't made a video where i'm actually playing the game in a very long time and it's fun to do these little challenges like this um yeah, subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next one.